this is something that you're going to want to probably refer back to it, so I really strongly re recommend that you write something down here. Um, number one, what the word radical means. We should start with what the word radical means in math. Not what it means in everyday language, but what it means in, in, in math. Um, if you say something's a radical idea, it means something that's kind of way out there. I don't know what the connection is with, with what it means in math. Uh, in math, the word radical, you refer to something, an expression that involves a root sign. It's not a mathematical idea that's way out there, but so not just square roots, but any any kind of roots, right? We've looked at different kinds of roots. We have looked at square roots. So something simple that's a radical is like square root of three or something like that. But it could be later on and more in grade 11 when you look at radical expressions that involve variables. 2x squared plus 5, that this kind of stuff. Any of those things are radicals. In grade 10, we're going to stick to things, or, or you could even just have like square root of 5 times 3. You can put the 3 in front of it. This means, this obviously just means square root of 3. This means 3 times, times the square root of 5 if they're next to each other. You know that from before, like if you have 3x, it means 3 times x. If you have 3 square root 5, it means 3 times square root of 5. Maybe that seems obvious, but we want to not forget that as we work through this unit. Square root of 5. In grade 10, we deal with only things that have numbers under the square root sign. So we deal with this. We deal with this. We don't deal with things like that that have variables under the square root sign. You leave that till grade 11 to work with things like that. And what we are going to do is um, look at converting between two different types of things. This expression right here is called an entire radical. Because it just says square root and the whole number is underneath here. This one's called a mixed radical. Because it has a number underneath the square root sign, but then it's multiplied by something else in front. So that's the difference. And it, when you talk about an entire radical, all it has is a number underneath the square root sign and nothing else. Whereas if you talk about a mixed radical, it's part of the numbers that involves a square root sign, but part of it doesn't. So you you need to know how to convert between those two things. Okay, you know what? I wrote the I'm writing the wrong notes in the wrong title. Isn't that great? Radicals and fractional exponents, but that's okay. We'll adjust that later. Um we want to be able to convert between those two things. Or I would like you to be able to convert between those two things. I don't know if you'd like to be able to convert between those two things. Let's say you have something like square root of 20. You could evaluate that on a calculator, of course. Depending on how your calculator is and how it writes it, your calculator might show it with brackets, or your calculator might show it how you write it, depending on what your calculator looks like. So these two different calculators show it different ways. This one, this one shows it um, with brackets. If you push square root, and then you can put the 20 and close the brackets, that means as though you write it, the 20 is under the square root sign. So it's some irrational number. That's an irrational number. The decimals keep going on and on even though they stop on the screen here. Or, of course, you could do it on, some of you have calculators that show it um, differently here, like if you do square root of 20, it actually shows it underneath there. But it should give you the same number. Okay, irrational number. Um, that is actually the same as if you took the square root of 5 and you times it by 2. If you do this on your calculator, if you figure out square root of 5 and then times it by 2, it's actually the same. So first I want to show you or have you realize that those are the same. If I go 2 times square root of 5, 2 times square root of 5 should be the same, right? It is the same. Those numbers are identical. They're exactly the same number. Or you don't have to put the time sign in there. You can just put 2 square root 5, okay? And it can be written like that. 
root 20 or 2 root 5. Let me just copy that picture so we don't have to keep writing it over and over again. Okay, so one of the things you have to be able to do in this section is be able to convert between those two things. Convert between those two numbers. So even before you can convert between them, let's understand that those are the same. Same numbers, right? These are equal. Oops. My arrow there. Okay, those are equal to each other. If you take square root of 20 or take square root of 5 and multiply by 2, they're equal. We need to be able to convert between those two things. Um, the easier thing to do is to take this and convert it to that. So let's try and do that first. We're going to try and take this expression and see if we can get it to look like this expression. If you wanted to do that, you can change the 2 into square root of something. 2 is the square root of something. What is 2 the square root of? This is not a trick question. What's 2 the square root of? Square root of 4. If I record this and put it on the internet, they're going to think you guys aren't very bright. You know that? Um, four, square root of 4 times square root of 5. If you write this, if you write this as the square root of something, then it's easy because if you have square root of 4 times square root of 5, you can write it like this under one single root sign. If this is a multiplication, if that's a multiplication, square root of 4 times square root of 5, you can just make it square root of 4 times 5. Those are equal. Two separate square roots can be multiplied and written as one single square root. Does that make sense? And then if I have square root of 4 times 5, obviously I can write the 4 times 5 as what? You can make up for the previous thing they, they, so that they realize you know what 4 times 5 is. 20, all right. So this that is just showing that this is equal to this, right? Those things are equal. The key here is seeing that if you have a 2 outside the square root sign, what does it eventually become when it goes inside the square root sign? Like you could look at this as saying 2 square root of 5 and it suddenly became square root of 4 times 5. It's as though somebody took the 2 and put it inside the square root sign, but if you put the 2 inside the square root sign, what does it turn into? It turned. It didn't remain a 2, right? I can't just change this. I can't just say I'm going to take this 2 and put it in there. It's 2 times 5, right? I can't do that. I can't do that, right? If I put the 2 under the square root sign, what does it have to become so that it's equal? It has to become a 4, right? If I, I can take this 2 and put it inside here as long as I change it into a 4. Because when it's under the square root sign, square root of 4 is 2, right? These are equal. A 2 outside the square root sign is like a 4 inside the square root sign. All right? That's how you can change a mixed radical. This is a mixed radical to an entire radical. So that's changing a mixed radical into an entire radical. Does that make any kind of sense to you? Are we okay with that? I want us to think about it like this. If you have a square root sign... Let's pick some kind of, just give me two one-digit numbers. Somebody give me a one-digit number. Three, okay, what's another one-digit number? Six. Six, okay, if you have that. If you want to change this, let's change this into an entire radical. Can you try that for yourself right now? I'll pause this. So you hopefully have something there. If you want to, if you want to change this into an entire radical... However you think about it, you can either write this as square root of 6 times square root of, what's what's 3 the square root of? 9. If you put the 3 inside the square root sign, it becomes a 9. 3 square root of 6 is the same as if you have a 9 inside there. Can we have everybody stop talking, please? So it's the same as square root of 54. You can always check on your calculator. Put that in your calculator. 
Put that in your calculator. Make sure they're the same. Can we really honestly stop the conversations, please? Okay. This is what we have to get used to with the with the desks like this. Some of you have calculators where when you put this in and push equals, it might change it to that or vice versa. Like you might have a calculator that does this for you. Oh, now you're all listening, eh? If you have a calculator like that, that's great. You can use it to check your answer. Just don't forget that there's a no calculator part to this provincial exam. This is the kind of thing they would test you on there because you need to be able to do it, right? I don't think it's necessarily all that hard. What may be slightly harder is going the other direction, taking this and turning it into 2 root 5. Because this is easy. This is uh, this is just taking a number and saying, what's 2 the square root of 4, put it in there. This way you have to break the number apart. Here you're multiplying the numbers together, 4 and 5 to get 20. Over here you have to break the number apart. If you're going to try and turn this from root 20 into a mixed radical, because this is an entire radical. If you're going to make it into a mixed radical, what you need to do is think of, it, well, you can do it two ways here. I would say you, the two ways you can do this are, um, well, let's call them the, method one can be the break it apart into prime factors, or let's say break it apart all the way. And the other method is the don't break it apart all the way. How about that? So what I mean by that is um, you can you can break it apart into 20. You can you know how you did factor trees or factor stacks or whatever, however you did it? Break that number apart. Eventually, you could, you know how you do 20, and you could say it's 2 times 10 and break this apart, 2 times 5, so you have 2 times 2 times 5. However you break the number apart, you end up with 2 times 2 times 5, right? If you see that there's a pair of 2s, if you see there's a pair of 2s, you can put one of those 2s outside of the square root sign and leave the rest inside. A pair of twos under the square root sign is like a single two outside the square root sign. Okay, when you look for things that were perfect squares, you look for pairs of prime factors. You can pull one of them outside there if you have a pair of them. The other way you can do it is just say, if I have a number that's 20, look for something that's, look for a factor that's a perfect square. So if you're breaking apart 20, you can say, does it have, can I divide it by something that's a perfect square? What number can you divide it by that's a perfect square? So you try dividing it by 4 or 9 or 16 or 25 or 36. You can divide it by 4, right? I mean, we know that from over here, obviously, but we're pretending we don't know that. If you write it as 4, 4 times 5, the square root of 4, right, square root of 4, times square root of 5. Square root of 4 is actually a whole number. It's 2, right? And the rest is stays there. Whichever way you want to do it, you can break it apart all the way and look for pairs and then put one of the pairs outside the square root sign. Or you can look for a number that's a perfect square and then just evaluate the square root of that. Can you try another one here, please? Okay, I want you to try one here. Let's say square root of 72. Can you try writing square root of 72 as a mixed radical? Try writing it as with the try writing it with the part underneath in as low a terms as you can. Okay? We'll pause this again. Here's your possible answers you might have got for this one. You might have gotten 3 root 8. You might have gotten um, 2 root, uh, what might you have gotten there? 2 root 18, I guess. Or you might have gotten 6 root 2. Those are the answers you might have gotten. Which one of those is the best? Which one's the best? This one's the best one. Why 
why do you think this one might be the, considered the best one? They're all equal. Check them on a calculator if you want. Because what? It's got this. It involves the smallest numbers. That's that's the best one because it involves the smallest numbers. All of these are mixed radicals, but this one is sort of in the lowest terms that you could put it in. You can check they're all equal if you don't believe me. Let's uh, move this down here for a second, and uh, I'll show you why. If we try this, the factor it all the way down method, when you factor 72, however you do it, if you use a factor tree, like you don't just show a million steps of factor trees here, but you end up with 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3, all right? Those are the prime factors of 72 because it's 8 times 9, right? If you notice that there's a pair of 2s, you can pull the 2s out and put those in front, okay? If you notice there's a pair of 3s, you can also put those in front and you can leave everything else inside. So you can put, if there's a pair of 2s underneath, you can put one two out in front. If there's a pair of threes underneath, you can put one three out in front. And then once I do that, what's left underneath the square root sign? What's left after I pull all those things out? Just the two, right? So if you have two times three times square root of two, this is six times square root of two. That's the way of doing it if you're breaking it down into its prime factors. Incidentally, why is it okay for me to pull, why can I, if I have a pair of these underneath, why can I write it as a single one outside the square root sign? Think about, let's uh, let's try some hard questions here. Like, what's this, whoa, that's not good. What's the square root of 5 times 5? What's the square root of 5 times 5? I know this is difficult because it's two steps you got to think about. What's the square root of 5 times 5? Five? 5, right? Because it's square root of 25, which is 5. What's the square root of 4 times 4? What's the square root of 172 times 172? 172. If you have square root of a pair of numbers multiplied, if you have square root of a pair of numbers multiplied, it's just equal to that number, right? If you have square root of n times n, what is it equal to? <laughs> this is why if you have a pair of them underneath here, you can pull them out and put them in front, okay? If you don't like to do it that way, that way is always going to be, that way will always work. It'll always be fairly straightforward because you break it all the way down and then you look for pairs. If you don't want to do it as looking for pairs, the thing you have to do is then, if you want to try not to break it down all the way, you could just write this as 8 times 9, and you see that 9 is a, is a perfect square. So you could say this is square root of 8, square root of 9, right? This is 3 times square root of 8. That's probably how you stopped at this answer before. But you have to look, does 8 have a factor? You have to look at what's left over and see, does that have a factor that's a perfect square? Can I split this one up even more? Can I split the 8 up into something? What can you split 8 up into? Is there a perfect square factor there? 8, you can say 2 times 4, right? This square root of 4, you can make into a 2. So you can have 2 times 3 times square root of 2, or in other words, 6 times square root of 2. You can write it that way. Whichever way you're doing it is fine, as long as it makes some sense and as long as you can get to the simplest thing in the end. This you should practice. This is going to be a piece of cake to do if you practice this. I don't want to right now make it one step harder. They do make it one step harder in the book because they ask you to do this with not just square roots. They ask you to do this with cube roots. So they'll say something like, um, simplify this, write this as a mixed radical, uh, cube root of 24. You know how up here when we were doing square roots and simplifying them, 
You were looking for pairs of things up here. When you're dealing with square roots, you're looking for pairs. What are we going to be looking for when we're looking for cube roots and writing them as mixed radicals? You're not going to be looking for pairs of factors. What are you going to be looking for? Three of them, right? You're going to be looking for three of them. If you, if you have 24 and you write it as 2 times 2 times 2 times 3, because that's what it is, that one you can look and say there's three 2s. I could write one of them outside the cube root sign and leave the other stuff inside. If you have three of them underneath the cube root sign, it's the same as one of them outside. Or if you if you had the fourth root of something, five times five times five times five, and then a seven or something, you could take all of those things and you could write them outside, right? Four of those things under a fourth root sign, you could write that outside. But you can wait to get it to that stage. Are we okay with this? There's one last thing we're going to look at. We're going to look at it later, not right now, because I think for some of you, we've already 21 minutes and 18 seconds is past your uh, attention span. Some of us have proven that it's well before that, but uh, not to mention any names or anything like that. Um, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not mentioning any names, but it's a couple of you that just talk the whole time, even though it's quietly, but it's a bit distracting. Um, no, the last thing is... The last thing is looking at how fractional exponents are connected with this. Some of you have already looked at this. It's it's looking at how something like 16 to the 3 quarters and being able to write that as the 4th root of 16 to the 3rd or writing it as the 4th root of 16 to the 3rd. You might be able to figure it out just by looking at it and looking at the examples in the book. I will talk to you about that afterwards. Right now, I think you should practice this. Practice writing mixed radicals as entire radicals and entire radicals as mixed radicals. Look at the assignment for that section. Don't go back and work on section 4.2. Either work on the examples that go with um, that go with this section. Look at the examples that go with this section where it says write each mixed radical as an entire radical write each entire radical as a mixed radical. Try doing those things. Try checking the one, you know, the ones that are the your turn questions where the answers are there. Or sometimes you can check with your calculator, check with you, check with uh, somebody else you're working with or or go and try some of the ones within the assignment and then you can check your answers in the back, okay? Don't work on something from two sections ago. Work on this right now. Okay?